In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Welcome to Coptic Witness Q&A. Today we have a question from one asking, isn't it hypocritical for Christians to say that their God is good when he allows all this evil in the world? Thank you for your question. Actually, my beloved, hypocrisy really is the foundation of the arguments of those who don't believe in God. I want to explore some practical examples of this because it's a fundamental flaw people far from God may not be aware of. If you are an atheist or think you don't need God, stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to give some sound advice on how to overcome what I would say is a character flaw. So let's start with one of the most common arguments atheists offer against God's existence, which was mentioned in the question in which what they call the problem of evil. Mr. Atheist will say something like, If God exists and God is all good, all knowing, and all powerful, why is there so much evil in the world? Now, there are plenty of apologists who have refuted this attack on God, and we can discuss those answers in another video. But the question is really about hypocrisy. So we want to see how Mr. Atheist is condemning God, the source of all goodness, while at the same time, Mr. Atheist himself allows evil within his own circle of authority. So let's say Mr. Atheist has a loved one, a wife, for example. How many times has she disrespected or wronged him and he's tolerated her? He could have put an end to it. He is stronger than her. He could have beat her. He could have threatened her. He could have killed her. He could have ended the relationship by divorcing her. But would he do all of that and then say that he does it because he is good? Or he could have prevented it altogether by not marrying her in the first place because he certainly knew that she was kind of sassy during the engagement. Mr. Atheist doesn't do any of that because he loves her. So he tolerates her. He's patient with her. And likewise, God allowing evil doesn't disprove his existence, but rather it reveals his good characteristics. He is loving. He is long-suffering. He is a tolerant. And many other things that we can discuss in another video. Another example, how many times has Mr. Atheist been treated unjustly, had the ability to get justice, but decided to have mercy instead? Many atheists are kind and patient people. You, sir, who asked this question may be one of them. So they may delay bringing about punishment or justice on a person in the hopes that they will say, I'm sorry. Maybe Mr. Atheist has an employee who lied about this or that to gain some advantage, but he decided to give his employee a second chance. If the employee does it a second time, Mr. Atheist may delay firing him to see if he'll do it a third time. He is patient, but when it comes to God, Giving people second chances or third chances or thousands of chances to turn from their evil, suddenly God doesn't exist, according to Mr. Atheist. Let's look at another argument atheists call divine hiddenness. Mr. Atheist starts his argument with a premise like, if God were all loving, he would not allow non-believers to exist. Or if God were all loving, he would blah, blah, blah. You can fill in the blank with anything because Mr. Atheist has put a microscope on one of God's characteristics and ignored all the others, most notably wisdom. But Mr. Atheist doesn't apply the same standard to himself. Of course not, because reducing a human being down to only one of their characteristics would be unrealistic, belittling, unfair, turning the person into a simpleton or a single-celled organism. How much worse is the effect when one does that to God? If God were all loving, he would make himself obvious to everyone. He would show himself. This is what they say. Again, apologists have answered this, and I perhaps will too in another video. But the hypocrisy with this premise is that Mr. Atheist puts his faith and his trust in others whom he knows nothing about or even ever seen. But when it comes to God, no, God, you don't exist. Let me give you a practical example, because this happens all the time. Whenever Mr. Atheist flies in an airplane, he puts his trust in his life in the hands of a pilot he's never even met or seen. He knows nothing about the pilot, he doesn't know if the pilot is a good pilot or a bad pilot. He doesn't know if the pilot's drunk or on drugs. He doesn't know if the pilot's angry or if his wife is divorcing him or if he's suicidal. He doesn't know anything. Yet, Mr. Atheist has faith and puts his life in that pilot's hand. Or maybe Mr. Atheist likes to ride roller coasters. It's not obvious to him who the engineer was. He can't see the engineer, but he knows and believes there was somewhere an engineer evidenced by the roller coaster itself. And Mr. Atheist again puts his faith, his trust, and his life in that engineer. 
trusting that he designed the roller coaster correctly. Mr. Apius has never met and never even seen the maintenance man, but he knows that there is one maintaining the roller coaster so that it remains safe and doesn't fall apart while Mr. Atheist is riding it. In these examples, Mr. Atheist hasn't reviewed any evidence or QC'd any calculations or seen any resumes. He hasn't verified anything with regards to the pilot or the engineer or the maintenance guy, but he trusts. He has faith. But when it comes to the pilot of the universe, there's no trust. When it comes to the engineer of the cosmos, no faith. Why? It's hypocrisy. So what is an atheist to do? The first thing is to recognize that there is something wrong. The behavior is not matching the belief system. This is a signal an alarm should be sounding because there's an intruder, a spy. The mother of hypocrisy or the cause of hypocrisy is deception. Mr. Atheist, my friend, you are deceiving. Wittingly or unwittingly, knowingly or unknowingly, you are deceiving first and foremost yourself. This God doesn't exist idea you've adopted is a smokescreen covering the real reason you deny God in your life. Most likely the reason you do this is one of the following six possible reasons. Number one, corruption. Atheism and corruption are directly linked. As it says in Psalm 14, 1, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. This means that one who says there is no God wants to live and do whatever he wants without any accountability because he wants to keep his conscience free and light. Because if he says that God exists, then that means that there is a right and a wrong. So his conscience gets heavy and condemns him because he is doing wrong things that he doesn't want to abandon. So he takes the easy way, the coward's way, which is to cancel God and say he doesn't exist. But this is a delusion. And many atheists who have repented and turned back to God admit to this being the case. The second possible reason, Mr. Atheist, of why one might put this smokescreen is pride. With all the learning and reading and the sophistication and the worldly knowledge, one comes to think that he's different from others, that he's more special than others. Worse than that is he comes to think that he knows even better than God, if there is a God, because he sees himself as God. The third possible reason is a disaster of an upbringing, a messed up childhood. Perhaps, for example, this person's father was the type that doesn't deserve to be a father. Maybe his father humiliated him or abused him or abandoned him or the like. So then when we Christians come and tell that person, God is your father, your true father, he says, don't mention that. He wants nothing to do with that because he never experienced how it was supposed to be, how a father is supposed to be tender and kind loving and die for his kids. Another possible reason why Mr. Atheist may be putting up this smoke screen has to do with the bad behavior of some Christians themselves. So when a Christian or a priest or a pope does something wrong to this person, which happens because any one of us human beings can be corrupted, then they blame God. Instead of doing what they should have done was to say that the priest made a mistake, they blame God and refuse him completely, saying those people, that priest, that pope, these are the ones who represent God, right? No, thank you. I don't want that. Another possible reason is related to politics and economics, if you can believe it. They do play a role. How so? Christianity is against many interests, especially those driven by the love of money. For example, the weapon industry, the buying and selling of tanks and fighter jets and missiles, etc. If everyone followed Jesus' commandments to love one's enemies, this industry would die. The pharmaceutical industry, the sex industry, the slave industry, all these kinds of industries push the economy and in the eyes of the lovers of money, it's better for people to hate each other, to be sick, to be sexually immoral, etc. Finally, there may be another reason that is idiosyncratic to the person himself. To find it, we must examine ourselves to find the truth inside. When we discover the real reason for one's denial of God, then one can do the next step, which is be humble. Knowing that we've been deceiving ourselves and others, we can be frank with ourselves and say, I have been on the wrong path. I have been so foolish. I know nothing. In the description box below, there's a link you can click to download a free book all about humility. The last step, now that we've humbled our ego, and we can commit to being genuine and honest by applying a single standard to ourselves and to God, no double standards, meaning if I know that I can be not only just, but also merciful, Certainly God can too, even more so. 
If I know that I can be loving, but also prudent, certainly God can also, even more so, etc. I will not blasphemously belittle God by reducing him to a math equation or a SpongeBob Krabby Patty secret formula. In that case, only I will be the loser. In essence, I am committing to a life of seeking the truth. And it is an amazing journey because around each corner is something new to discover about God because he is truth. As he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And glory be to God forever. Amen.